Hello, my name is Paul Lindup. I'm part of the team at Smart Rural Co-op and I want to talk today in this session about why rural is not just a low density city. It needs a whole new approach. Now I can't hope to cover everything that sits behind this statement but we'll touch on a couple of key things that we hope you in the long term the audience can help us with and be part of the solution that unlocks the value that's there in rural. So our vision is straightforward. It's helping rural Scotland to work smarter. It's all about work smarter, not harder. And the value that digital and data can bring to that equation to help it work smarter. So Smart Rural is actually a co-op. It's an agricultural co-op. It has members which will be farmers, landowners, but also other rural stakeholders, because this is about all of rural. And to put it into context, rural Scotland is 95% of the country. That's 75,000 square kilometres that we need to help work smarter through digital. Now, within the context of digital, there's a broad spectrum. Broadband goes to buildings, mobile hopefully follows you. Uh, pretty limited coverage in that 75,000 square kilometres. But if we want to deliver this vision to rural Scotland, we have to be able to gather data from the green spaces, the fields, the hills and the glens. And that's why an early part of our vision delivery was around choosing our LP1. And in our case, we chose Laura One. So delivering the vision. Really, it is about opening up new markets in these areas that have previously been perceived to be low reward. And that means delivering the infrastructure. And it is about two to two and a half thousand base stations are going to be needed to do this. But the biggest single task really is working with the demand side and teaching them and showing them and getting them to value what data can do for them, how that data can make their lives easier, how it can make their businesses more sustainable, how it can reduce their environmental footprint, and obviously delivering all of that at an attractive price. But the critical thing about all of this is helping them understand that data can have value for them. Is rural just a low density city? Well, let's explore that a bit more. So obviously in population, yeah, a city is high density, rural is low density. When you start to look at your deployment, yeah, the cost per base station in the city is quite high because of all the access. It's substantially lower in rural. But when you say, well, what's the cost to deploy per person? So if you were the marketing department, how much money can I make, etc. In rural, it is substantially higher than the city. But what also is higher, which is where it starts to make rural really interesting, but still challenging, is the number of use cases. As you go away from centres of population, there is an exponential growth in the number of use cases. However, that growth and the population, etc., means that this potential scale of any use case is much, much higher in a city than it is in rural. So this drives some of those business behaviours around I can do parking sensors and I can do thousands of them. Oh, go to rural, Ooh, maybe there's only 100 customers. So we have to think about this. And why, one of the key questions people ask, well, why do you think there are so many use cases in rural? Well, there's always been a digital divide between city and rural. Maybe that drives it. I think possibly one of the things is in cities, you've always had people 
and the people themselves act as sensors, crowdsourcing information 101. These people are sensors. Now, whether it's their paid job or they're a passerby, they will be detecting things. In rural, you don't have that. So use cases that rely on you sensing something in a remote location, absolutely driven by IoT. There is no human replacement. So they're different. So what are rural's needs? And they are incredibly diverse. Yes, it's agriculture, it's ecology, it's the environment, it's remote assets, it's transport, it's how do you help people live a full life independently in a rural setting? All of these things are rural needs. And that's a very broad canvas. So how about we get a couple of specifics and help you get your head around some more things here. So you have to, if you're going to work in rural, really understand your stakeholders because there are a lot of them and you need to understand all of them. So agriculture is, is key for site access, but it can't be the only vertical you're servicing. Otherwise, you won't make a business of rural. You need to find other anchor tenants. And quite often, the anchor tenants that are out there, utility companies, um, rail companies, are more digitally mature than your average farmer. So they may get what you're offering more quickly than the agricultural community. So you've got to be prepared for your stakeholders to move at different rates. But always have in mind the mantra that you build once and use many. So just because you deploy a base station on a farm, do not stop, stop thinking of different ways to use that and the data flow to service other stakeholders. You need to collaborate and play to your strengths. Do not imagine that you can do everything. Work, find other people to partner with. Now here's a, an example. This is a Google Earth view of a projected Lorawan coverage in Angus Council. This is coming about because Angus Council wished to deploy high-speed broadband and a core network to their assets in this area. We said we could help them by delivering site access through the farmland, in return for which they are deploying our Lorawan infrastructure. So understand it and play to your strengths. Ours in this is site acquisition and Lorawan. All the infrastructure build and deployment is the council's. So have that have that view. Another one in rural, and it's a consequence of that earlier paradigm of why there are so many more use cases in rural, is think differently, think reusable, think modularity. Because there are so many use cases, you can't build your software system from the bottom up every time you get a contract. You have to have all these reusable building blocks and the thinnest veneer of customization. And that may mean there are some compromises in functionality, but at the end of the day, you have delivered something and it's that quality against price may be something you have to compromise on. In the devices, it is not dis dissimilar, but I think that is where we're spotting a gap in the market. And somebody hopefully in the audience listening to this presentation can put their hand up and go, I've got what you need. So to illustrate that, let's move away from this very general approach and look at something specific. So a couple of use cases for you. Farm security, are the gates open or closed? Now this isn't the same as in your office block where you've got a very nice controlled environment and is the door open or closed. Farm gates can be of different vintages. They rattle and move in the wind and 
there is a degree of movement within which they are still considered closed and you don't want an alarm going off every time they move. With quad bikes, you go, you want to know whether it has tipped over, had a rotation, etc. If that rollover could be detected, then you can trigger an alarm system for help because quite often that means that the user of the vehicle is incapacitated. Now, there are hundreds of over-the-counter devices out there already. But to service these particular use cases, there is probably a need for more than one device per gate, per quad bike, to deliver the functionality. And that's really not going to work. It's more like a proof of concept setup. So what you, we want is to find something that can deliver this and have multiple purposes. Maybe not simultaneously, you don't want something that's overly complicated in its payload, but you want a device that can have multiple uses. Now, we know this is possible. We all do, we've all got a smartphone. And within that, and there has been five, 10 years, functionality that if packaged could provide us with the answer to both these use cases in one device. So what are we imagining that that solution looks like? And why can we not have that one device with multiple uses? So the rural multifunctional device, or you may be more familiar with, it's the digital version of a Swiss Army pen knife. Now, I'm not by any means um, technical. Printed circuit board software is not my thing. But my dream ticket revolves somewhere around a nine axis MEMS. So it's got the gyroscope, accelerometer, and digital compass. It can tiny ML, machine learning, and it's got the LR1110 system inside it all encapsulated in IP65 or better. So, and that can be configured to the job, either at the factory, at install, or even reconfigured during the year. A device that does one job in the winter and one in the summer. No problem with that if that can be delivered. So that rural MFD, if it's delivered, can unlock some of that scale problem that we saw back in the earlier table and deliver something game-changing for rural. Tie that to a different approach around software development, etc., and you start to see where we're wanting to head. So, in conclusion, yeah, rural is not a low-density city, and I hope you can see that and agree with us now. But if you take the mantra, build once and use many, address as many stakeholders as possible and find yourself your rural MFD, then, yeah, maybe you will be able to unlock those riches that rural can offer and you can start to make a very valid and vibrant business out of rural and not just look at it as a, a challenge and a problem. Thank you very much. Please feel free to get in touch with me on smart, Paul Lind up at smartrural.coop. I have to remember that. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. And bye for now.